Sightseeing in Capri is thirsty work. But I know just the place to get the coolest drink. This stand has been around for more than 50 years. They started with just making lemonade, but now they make a variety of gelatos. My favorite thing to get here, though, is the lemon granita, and it's made with the lemons of Capri. It is so good. Hello. Hello. Can I get a lemon granita? Yes. Grazie. Granita is so simple to make. It's just squeezed lemons and sugar syrup. and lots of crushed ice. That's it, Dave. It's a perfect combination of sort of a lemony tartness with a little bit of sweetness, and it's icy. So it's perfect on a hot Capri day. As no cars are allowed into town, all the food gets delivered by electric carts to restaurants and cafes. And speaking of food, I'm feeling like I need a little snack, and I know just the place to get it, so come on. These sweet pastries are homemade by the Bonacote family, who run the best pastry shop in Capri. Buonacore is an institution here, and what I love about it is you can get great snacks. They've got fantastic stuffed peppers and rice balls, but at the same time, fabulous desserts. And I've got such a sweet tooth, so I'm going to get one of these. Come stai, Giovanna? Oh, buongiorno, hello. Could I get a little uh, dessert? Yes. A little something sweet. The most classic pastry here is the capizina, made from ground almond and bitter chocolate. And where are the lemon cookies? These are made with almonds, lemon, vanilla, and honey. The capillo? Yeah. Capillo. And I have the ricci also. The hazelnut clusters are also a specialty here. Also with the Perfect. lemon? Yeah, why not? And it's a lemon. It's lemon day. Lemon, yes, lemon <laughs> day. No chocolate day. Mixed lemon and chocolate. All right, you can mix it. Okay. Oh, chocolate. I don't know so if I can eat all of that. It's not <laughs> very difficult to do. And then maybe a cafe? Yes, Italian cafe, you want espresso? Yeah, I'd oh. love an espresso. Okay. Perfect. I think I'm going to go for the Ricci first. Mm. It's basically like a nut cluster. It's almonds, and then they drizzle a mixture of white chocolate and lemon juice and powdered sugar. I'm telling you, it is divine. Mm -mm 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 -mm. My good Giada enjoyed. Grazie Giovanna. Okay. You know what? You shouldn't really do this, but the heat of the espresso will melt the white chocolate and the sugar. It gets even better. Between June and September, thousands of tourists flock to Capri each day. So most beaches are packed with sun worshippers. But if you head down the coast late in the afternoon, there are some relatively deserted spots where you can get away from the crowds. I like to escape to the southwest tip of the island, to a beach which is just below the lighthouse at Punta Carena. After five in the afternoon, the day trippers have been ferried back to Naples, so you can have the place to yourself, if you time it right. It's a public beach, so it doesn't cost anything, and a swim in the ocean here is very refreshing. The rocky headland is truly dramatic, and it's the best place to be at sunset, and the perfect way to end any day on Capri. Usually when I come here, the ocean is glassy and calm, gorgeous. But today, the Mediterranean is whipping up some wind and waves. Even though it's now 7.30, it's still very warm out. No crowds, a nice breeze, and the setting sun. What more could you want? They say that Capri makes you forget all of your problems. But don't stay too long, or you might never leave. Today I've planned a boat trip around the island. First up, 
Standing 300 feet high, Capri's most famous attraction, the Fadalioni Cliffs are even more spectacular viewed from the sea. Going through the arch of these limestone stacks is truly awesome. There's no shortage of organized boat tours. Excursions run every hour from Marina Grande, and it only takes you an hour and a half to get around the whole island. It's the best way for sure to fully enjoy all that the island has to offer. This is just what I need before heading to a hot kitchen. I'm going to a restaurant where I've learned some of my best Italian seafood secrets. It's called Torre Saracena, and they keep a live shellfish tank. Torre Saracena has some of the most unique crustaceans on the island. Some of my favorites are this elephant lobster. Look how cool it is. They've got beautiful dark purple tails. Look how cool, all speckled. Now, these lobsters end up growing to be eight to nine pounds. So they get to be huge. And then we've also got this big guy here. Look at that. Look at that monster. It's a spiny lobster and you find them off the Faglioni. Pretty cool, right? I used to love this up as a kid. There you go, there you go, there you go. And then, look at this one. Now this one is like straight out of a movie, is it not? Look at that, like a horror flick. It's a rock lobster, that's what they call it around here. And it's local and indigenous to this place. It's got like purple little legs and claws on the bottom, see? Look at that. Pretty funny, isn't it? All right, now I'm ready to pick part of my lunch here. I'm just picking a few sea truffles. Now, they look like clams, I know, but they're slightly sweeter than normal clams. And a few mussels as well. You gotta love mussels, especially when they get them right off the rocks here. And of course, you need some vongoli. Now, vongoli are just basically little baby clams, just like that. These are really great. Even with some spaghetti, it's a local favorite and one of mine as well. All right, I'm going in the kitchen. We'll saute these up. Domenico, io vorrei questi qui e cominciare. I'd love to start with these. So, allora, che posso fare? They're used to me muscling in here, and Domenico, the head chef, is letting me cook the shellfish starter for my family. I think it's soup, I want to get splattered. Ti posso aiutare? Cool, oh, yeah. All right, so Domenico's making one of my favorite pastas. Rigatoni with squash and gambri. Gambri being prawns. All right, you just add a little bit of olive oil, then some garlic. Now, I just like a couple of cloves, but here they usually add more. That just heats up a little bit. You just want to cook the garlic just so you can smell the aroma. That's it. Add all of the ingredients. It only takes four to five minutes to cook. That's what I love about this. You gotta put the lid on. And at the end, we're gonna add a little bit of fresh parsley just for extra flavor. Putting the lid on will create steam, which will cook all of these. That's it. Now it's gonna cook. Oh, that smells good. I just like to add a little bit of parsley right over the top. That freshness is really good in here. See, they've all opened up. Now, they've created a beautiful little juice. And that juice is what makes these taste so good. Time to eat. Everyone seems to be enjoying it, and Domenico's house specialty is starting to come together. While the squash is cooking, you take another pan and add parsley to some sizzling olive oil. Follow this with the raw prawns. At this stage, Domenico adds a splash of white wine, which will really give a zing to those prawns. 
but it's the chopped basil which will give the dish its classic flavor, along with the squash puree. Simple, but superb. Sono rigatoni con gamberi e zucca. Rigatoni with prawns, some squash. Okay, all right. And then he finishes it. He finishes it with basil and parmesan cheese. You're gonna love it. Good. You're gonna love this time. Thank you. Yeah. That looks so good. Grazie, Domenico. Grazie a voi. Grazie, Domenico. È meraviglia. Very good. The basil is fantastic. I think some more. They are so delicious. How is it? Great. The pasta is all done. Just the way you like it, right? I love it.